Hi, I'm Tricky Pixie, and I'm going to be covering the basic rules of roller derby. So for a little background, roller derby started in the 1930s in Chicago. Its popularity peaked around the 70s, and in the early 2000s, it was revived as a sport in Austin, Texas. The sport quickly spread, and a lot of leagues eventually consolidated under the Women's Flat Track Derby Association. These are the most widely used rules today in roller derby, and I'm going to be covering those rules. So let's just jump right into it. All skaters are required to wear um, safety gear that includes helmet, mouth guard, wrist guards, elbow pads, and knee pads, as well as quad skates, so no inlines. There are five skaters from each team on the track. Four of them are blockers. As you can see, there's four blockers from each team. And one is the jammer, indicated by the star. In actual gameplay, the jammers would place a helmet cover over their helmet, which has the stars on it, and that's how you know who the jammer is. In roller derby, points are scored when the jammer passes opposing players' hips. However, they do not score any points on their initial pass. So let's just go through an example. The jammers must line up behind the jam line, and blockers must line up between the jam line and the pivot line. When the whistle blows, the jammers try to make their way through the pack, while the blocker's job is to stop the opposing jammer from getting through while also helping their own jammer to get through. So they have to play both offense and defense at the same time. Whichever jammer gets out of the pack first and earns a pass on all opposing blockers is declared the lead jammer. The lead jammer has the privilege of calling off the jam before it runs its natural course of two minutes. So in this case, yellow jammer got lead so they get out first, let's say purple is right behind them. So they both make their way around the track. All right, so they've both skated around. Um, yellow's in front with purple trailing behind. So the goal here for yellow is to score points by passing purple blocker's hips and then to call off the jam before the purple jammer can get any points. Um, so they get through and maybe purple's approaching in this case, they got two points, and then they would call it off before Purple Jammer can pass any of Yellow Team's blockers. So that's what a typical jam might look like. So the next thing I want to cover is penalties. Generally, you're allowed to push and pull and shove your own teammates as much as you want, but when you contact skaters from the other team, that's when you must follow these rules, and generally these are for safety reasons. So. As you can see from the graphics, these are the blocking zones and target zones. Target zones are the places on their body that you're allowed to hit, and blocking zones are parts of your body that you're allowed to hit them with. So as you can see, you're not allowed to contact them above the shoulders, which would be a high block, or below mid-thigh, which is a low block, or you're not allowed to hit in the square of the butt or the back, which is a back block. Similarly, you can't use your leg below mid-thigh to hit other skaters um, or above the shoulders. The differences are you are allowed to use your back to hit other skaters and you're not allowed to use your elbow or forearms to hit other skaters. Generally, the referees will not call a penalty if you, for example, if I do have my forearm on another skater, it's not a penalty until that contact has impact on the game. So if it's just placed there, it's probably fine, but once I shove them out of the way, then that probably has impact and would be called as a penalty. So because of these target zones and blocking zones, you'll often see skaters having their backs to the jammer, so they'll be facing in derby direction, and that's because they're presenting an illegal target zone to the jammer by their back. The jammer has to avoid hitting their back. You're allowed to hit the side of the back, but not the square of the back. So the jammer has less places to hit. If they were to face the jammer, the whole front of the body is a legal target zone, so they would be able to hit you anywhere and come at any angle. So there's a couple more penalties I'd like to go over. So cutting the track is one where you either go out of bounds or you're hit out of bounds by another skater. In this case, purple jammer is hit out by the yellow blocker. And if purple jammer re-entered the track up here, they would have cut every single blocker and that, they would get a cutting the track penalty. So they're not allowed to re-enter ahead of any skater they had not already passed. You are allowed to cut one teammate, but not two. 
So once they get their penalty assessed, you must exit the track and go sit in the penalty box for 30 seconds. Gameplay still continues, your team is just down a skater, and in this case, because it's the jammer, you just can't score any points for 30 seconds. If the jammer does get a penalty um, in a jam, they either lose lead jammer if they had it, or they become ineligible to get lead for that jam. So after 30 seconds, they would rejoin. Gameplay is normal. So something you might see in gameplay is what we call recycling. This is when the jammer gets hit out by a blocker, and then because the jammer has to re-enter behind the hips of that skater and all other skaters they had not passed, um, while they're still out of bounds, this blocker can actually skate backwards, and then the jammer has to go all the way back and re-enter behind them. So it takes away space and it buys uh, time for your team to maybe play offense or just have more track to work with to defend against the opposing jammer. All right, so the last things I want to cover are the pack and star passes. Pack is a pretty complicated rule, but basically it's a rule where blockers from both teams must maintain proximity to one another. And this comes in the form of 10 foot increments. Um, so let's just run through an example. So the yellow jammer is pushing up this wall of purple blockers. Once they get past 10 feet from the yellow blockers, um, there's no more pack because they have to maintain that 10 foot proximity. When there's no more pack, blockers are no longer allowed to block. So the yellow jammer would just be able to get through. Um, in order to prevent this, the purple team would send one blocker backward. As you can see, it went from that gray out of play color back to green, which means everyone's in the pack. Um, they would send one blocker to hold the pack here. They must maintain that 10 foot range from the yellow blockers. Um, and then everyone's in the pack and their team can keep blocking. Um, when I first started watching Derby, this was pretty confusing to just see a skater standing there and not, you know, actively helping their team. But by standing there, they allow their team to continue holding the jammer past only 10 feet. Um, and this is what we call bridging. So once the blockers get to the next 10 foot mark, as you can see it changed color again, but it didn't go to gray um, because they're not out of play. They're just not in the pack anymore. So blockers are allowed to block up to 20 feet from the pack and the pack would be all of the yellow blockers and this purple skater who are within um, 10 foot increments. If they sent another one, then um, the purple blockers would remain in the pack, but they're allowed to stay together if they want as a three wall um, until 20 feet, which is the engagement zone from the pack. At this point, um, they would be out of play if they were pushed up a little more, and then they'd have to let the jammer go. Um, so let's say that this happens, yellow jammer gets lead, and purple jammer is stuck back here. So another thing that the purple jammer can do is if their pivot comes back to help them, um, they're allowed to take off their helmet cover with the star on it and pass it to their pivot. And the pivot is a blocker who has a helmet cover with the stripe. And they're the one blocker that's allowed to accept the star pass and then they become the jammer for the rest of that jam. Um, if you do pass the star, you're not allowed to get lead jammer, so it would often be used in a scenario like this where the other team has already gotten lead. Um, and this would be a very advantageous position because you can um, reach through the yellow wall of blockers and pass it, where purple um, pivot, now turn jammer, doesn't have anyone to beat and they can just go. If it was set up like this where the pivot um, was back here with the jammer, it wouldn't be advantageous to pass it to them because they also have to break through that entire wall. Um, so it would be better if the pivot positioned themselves in front to get that pass and take off right away and try and get those points. So those are the basic rules of roller derby. Um, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. I will have more videos in the future going over topics like cutting the track and pack definition along with strategies that go with those. Lastly, I want to say thanks to Vienna Roller Derby for letting me use their Ultimate Roller Derby Ubiquitous Magnet Board, which is this app. It works very well on Chrome. Um, there's also a phone app. I recommend you go check it out. Thanks and have a great day.